Is it? Oh, it's working. Sweet. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to a uh, Year with St. Joseph podcast. Um, I need to apologize to anyone who does listen to my podcast regularly. I did not have one in July. Um, I try to make up for it this month by doing two, but uh, um, I also like to apologize for anyone that listens to them either regularly or periodically. I feel like the last few that I've done have been kind of rushed and, and not great, so I apologize for... Um, that I uh, haven't really been uh, doing the prep work that, that I think I should be to to make sure that these podcasts are going to have value to anyone that's listening to them, which is, of course, why I, why I started this. So, again, apologize to everybody for that. Uh, trying the video version, uh, using, using the video this time. So I did that when I did my one with uh, Mary Baird, which, is, which was a blast. Um, so hoping to do that again. There's something flying around my face though, so maybe this video thing's not gonna go great. But <laughs> um, see, that's the third time. I just get it. That'd be great. Um, but anyway, so I, one of the things I said when I started this podcast was that I was going to uh, talk about Saint Joseph himself, but then also you know just areas that Saint Joseph has inspired me. Um, and, and kind of ways he's come out in my prayer life, my spiritual life to, to lead me closer to God. And, um, you know, I've joked a couple of times in different podcasts about how he was the one guy in the family that sinned, right? He's the sinner of the family. And, uh, probably the more relatable thing, and, and I'll, I'll, uh, plug Mary Baird again, cause she made a great comment about, uh, having, uh, sharing the name of our blessed mother and how kind of intimidating that can be to be named after, um, you know, a saint that hasn't sinned, right? <laughs> um, how do you relate to that? But, um, you know, Joseph was the sinner in the family, right? Now that, like that, I, I say that like, uh, he's known for it. Um, when I, I think he was a very, um, holy man, obviously referred to as a just man, but knowing that he wasn't perfect, um, and he did sin, um, you know, makes it a little relatable. So anyways, uh, tying that into just my personal thoughts and reflection, I went to confession today because I'm a sinner. Um, pretty good at it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'd like to consider myself a professional sinner. Actually, you know, thinking about the Olympics and watching these athletes just perform incredible feats and doing things that uh, you just shouldn't be able to do. And then you hear about the training that they do. Like it's every day and it's hours at a time. And they do it when they're sick, when they're hurt, when they're tired. It doesn't matter. They always go in and they do their workout. And I'm like, what? what am I good at? Like, what, what do I put that much dedication into that I could be an Olympic athlete? In? And I'm like, you know, what? I'm, a, I'm probably a professional sinner. I do that every day without fail. And when I'm sick and tired and not like mentally doing well, I actually do it more. So the practice is there. Like if there were contests for, um, sinning in the Olympics, like I, I, I think I'd be a pro. I think I'd have a shot at qualifying at least. Um, it's, it's something, I've, I mean, I've basically been training for 34 years. So, um, you know, it'd be a weird press conference after, I think, if you won a medal uh, for sinning, um, at least in, in my shoes and hopefully most of my listeners' shoes. You know, what do you, what, well, what do you, what do you have to say about winning? Like, you know, I've been trying to get out of this sport for, for decades, but I uh, just, I, you know, I keep hanging around. So, I guess at least today it paid off. <laughs> so anyways, um, I, so I went to confession and, and one of the things that, uh, the priest told me, and, and I'm, I'm like terrible in confession. I don't know how you guys are, but when I get in there, I'm just like, blah, 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 here's my sins. Same ones every time. Cause I can't get better. And, uh, that's it. it takes me like four and a half seconds. And the priest is like, um, anything else? I'm like, no, that's, that's all I can think of. Did you examine your conscience? No, not really. I just already know that it's going to be the same as last time. Um, so, but, um, anyways, so I'm in confession and, uh, so, you know, you don't get the greatest counsel probably if you don't do a real great reflection and really uh, examine. Uh, so I need to work on that. But as I'm in there, he says to me, you know, that, there's one guarantee that we, we pretty much all have, and that's that we're going to mess up. And he's like, have you, are you doing better than you were five years ago? I'm like, oh, you know, I think so. Um, he's like, do you think you'll be doing better five years from now than you are today? I'm like, yeah, I think so. I hope so. And he's like, and then when you die, you're going to be perfect. 
I'm like, no, heck no. <laughs> He's like, exactly, right? So no matter how, how good you do and how hard you try, you're still not going to die perfect. Um, you're still going to have faults. You're still going to have shortcomings. You're still going to have failures. And um, and then he quoted Mother Teresa. I mean, I'm probably going to butcher the quote, but um, basically the quote is, God doesn't demand success from us. He demands faithfulness. And then he kind of elaborated and said, not only does he, he doesn't demand success, he demands that we keep trying, that we keep getting up, knowing that we're going to fail, knowing that we're human, knowing that we have these shortcomings, that we can always get back up and that we're going to essentially fail till we die. But thanks, thanks be to God for his mercy, um, you know, through his mercy, through his death on, death on the cross, we'll have an opportunity to to accept that mercy and receive that mercy from God and, and uh, spend eternity with him in paradise. But um, knowing that was really kind of refreshing. And um, and it, again, because I'm so bad in confession, I don't always get really good counsel. So when I do, it's always really great for me. And so I just kind of, I came home and I shared with my wife. And um, you, know, you got to be careful when you're sharing your counsel. Like, uh, don't tell them like what we talked about specifically. Um, and she's like, dude, I know. I live with you. Trust me. I I deal with your sins daily. So I'm like, that's fair enough. Um, you know, I always ask my wife, you know, do you ever, do you ever wonder what it'd be like to be in St. Joseph's shoes where like, you're the only sinner at the dinner table and every fight is your fault. And he's like, she's like, no, but I can imagine what it'd be like to be Mary. I'm like, we'll burn. Um, she's never said that, but she probably thinks it because most of the fights probably aren't my fault. But, um, um, but anyways, like I said, just thinking about St. Joseph and reflecting on that, the fact that he's he struggled and God chose him to to raise Jesus, um, God incarnate, um, he chose a flawed person to do that. He chose a sinful person to do that. And he chose someone um, that, that probably, um, you know, failed their whole life, like us. Um, maybe, maybe to a less extent than I do, <laughs> hopefully, I would imagine. Uh, but... But he chose someone that fails, that has that wasn't perfect, and gave him one of the greatest responsibilities in the world. And I guess that says a lot for what he can ask of us. And I mean, there's examples throughout the Bible, throughout Scripture about this, obviously. But um, for me, just a really impactful um, confession that I experienced today. Um, it really doesn't try directly into Saint Joseph, but I always I always think about how he's he's the one sinner in the family, and I uh, uh, always always kind of go to him when I know that I'm kind of messing up, or maybe I'm the source of strain or, or frustration in our home. Um, I'll ask for Saint Joseph's intercession, and be like, "Man, you were here. <laughs> you were always the one at fault if there was something going wrong." So, um, you know, give me wisdom, give me courage, which um, which was actually the the penance I was given was to pray for wisdom and courage in my relationships and in my uh, relationship with God specifically. So um, with that, I encourage anybody else listening to also pray for wisdom and courage. I don't think you need that as a penance to, for that to be a great prayer uh, for wisdom and courage and how to respond in relationships and especially in your relationship with God. So with that, God bless and uh, St. Joseph, pray for us. Thanks for listening.